It is Street Faith, where we talk about matters of faith from the level of the street. We are not doing academics here. We are doing daily life. We are not doing theology. We are doing practicality. Talking about truth, of course, that is something completely different from theology or doctrine and having a good time doing it, I might add. Here's the truth, the uh, matter of faith that has come across my path today, which is typically what I do. I typically just respond to something that has crossed my path, some matter of truth or faith that has crossed my path today. Here's the one that crossed my path today. Actually, it's crossed my path a couple of times, and that is the nature of God himself. I don't know that anything is more important than correctly understanding the nature or even perhaps even better, the character, the person of God, that knowing who God is, truly is. This is part of the reason for uh, the sending and the advent, the arrival of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was to reveal the Father to us, as I believe it was, was it Philip that uh, said, show us the Father? And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And uh, the opening of Hebrews says that he is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. So this was one of the multiple purposes that Jesus had in coming to us was to reveal God to us. I became aware um, many years ago, decades ago, in fact, when I was in Bible college, that it was possible to misunderstand the character of God. Prior to that point, I had interacted with God all my life. In my youth, my toddler years, I heard songs about him and thought he sounded like a pretty good guy. In my teenage years, he seemed to be a little bit oppressive because he was keeping me from doing things that I wanted to do. And then in my late teens and early 20s, as I was in Bible college, he was just the lawmaker, the rule maker, (laughs) the judge, and you had to appease him to get into heaven, which uh, was the goal, or so I thought at the time of the uh, faith. So, uh, you know, I've gone through various stages, various understandings of God, none of which were seriously questioned or challenged. But when I was in Bible college, back in that time where I still thought of God as the rule maker, lawgiver, judge of all uh, men, which indeed he is, but our tone, our understanding of that may be a little off. Uh, Back at that time, we were reading some book, cannot tell you what the book is, cannot source this one. Uh, I don't think it was Philip Yancey because I had not discovered Philip Yancey yet. This was in my first Bible college. I did not discover uh, Yancey until I went to my second uh, Bible college. But, Maybe it was somebody like Yancey. I can't remember. It could even be Yancey, and I and I could have totally mis. Uh, I, I I could be ascribing a memory from one Bible college to the other. But in any case, uh, in the book, the the author was talking about slave owners in the South who would beat their slaves and believe that the Bible told them to do so, and they would quote that verse where Jesus said, "the the servant who knows his master's will." Uh, and and doesn't do it will get many stripes where the the servant who does not know his master's will and doesn't do it will get fewer stripes. Um, somewhere in that, I'm not even sure now that I think about it that this was directly stated, but I got the idea that you could misunderstand who God is. And though I was quite immature at that time, even though I had a great information level, I had a lot of head knowledge about the Bible, still very immature But at that moment, I correctly realized that nothing was more tragic and nothing was more catastrophic than not correctly understanding or perceiving the person of God. Now, this idea has recently come up uh, in a couple of different ways for me. Most recently, it has come up right now, this very moment. I have started watching a movie that I have really wanted to watch. I don't watch very many movies or TV shows these days. They bore me. I'm just not into them that much anymore. But I I somehow came across one called Everything Everywhere All at Once, I believe is is the title. And it seems like it's got some philosophical ideas to it that might intersect with the faith or mirror the faith in some way. So I wanted to, to take a look at that. But I've just now started it, and I see that the main character is anxious because her father is coming to visit and she perceives that her father is going to criticize and judge her. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, what a terrible relationship. I really don't have that relationship with either my father or my mother. Now, part of that is because I've not given them reason to be ashamed of me. They're proud of me. I I know that. But again, what if 
they weren't. What if they were these uh, parents that I've seen so often? I've, I've never experienced in real life, but I've seen so often in, in movies, TV books that are just critical, just judgmental, just always uh, negative and unhappy with what their parents or what their children are doing and how they're living. I thought, man, that has to be horrible. And then as soon as I, I perceived that this is how the, the character sees her father and the effect that it's having upon her, I, I say, man, well, that's how a lot of people perceive God as well. So that is the first way that it has come across uh, my radar. Another way that it's come across my radar, and now we will pull out a quote unquote theological or doctrinal term. Don't know if it really deserves to be in that category. It's kind of, of low level as far as those words go, but that's the word immutable. Um, I believe somebody yesterday sent me uh, a poll. I don't know if it was a Barna poll. I don't think it was, but it was a poll about Americans and their belief in God and um, how that belief is changing. And one of the questions they asked in this poll is, do you believe that God is immutable, which means that he does not change? Now, I think that this idea was was brokered to me a couple of days ago as well. Like this is an idea that's kept popping up over the past couple of days, and I'm not exactly sure uh, when those other times would be, but I know that I have lately been thinking about the nature of God changing and how I believe that that can't be true, because if it is true, then the Old Testament, the older writings just lose all relevance. And and as one who knows the Bible quite well, I can tell you that they ought not to lose relevance. I believe we see the same God there that we see in Revelation, and it has to be that way or else the entire book crumbles and falls. So I know that some people think God was horrible in the Old Testament. He's wonderful in the New Testament. Actually, he's been wonderful uh, throughout the entire uh, human history, throughout his entire interaction with man. He's been wonderful. It's just that sometimes we don't understand him uh, very well. But in any case, this poll asked, do you believe in the uh, immutability, the unchangingness of God? And I've been thinking about that. And then uh, the last one is a devotion that I did just this morning. This is actually my day off as I am recording this here, but I still interact with the Lord on my day off because I have no greater joy than to uh, receive a word from him. So I went to do a devotion in hopes of that. And the devotion, uh, I like doing devotions written by other people because then I'm not in control. When I'm in control, I choose what I want, what I like, what I think I need. When I'm not in control, God can give me what I really need. So I do these devotions that are not uh, in my control, the, the verses the, that they select and the questions they ask and the songs they play, I have no control over them. I must simply receive and see what the Lord has given me. Well, this one was uh, quoting Isaiah 56, a couple of verses there, probably well known because this is where the Lord says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, which the Lord Jesus Christ uh, quotes. Now, again, you see a little bit of the immu immutability, unchangingness of God here, because Jesus, several centuries later, would say this was God's desire. This is still God's desire. So uh, he his desire had never changed. Uh, he wanted his temple, his house, if you will, to be a, a house of prayer, A, and for all nations or all peoples, B. But what really caught my attention was um, at the end, he says, thus, this is God speaking through Isaiah, thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. So the way I was taught to do devotions was to look at what it says about the Lord or look at what the Lord is saying about himself. We're so conditioned to look at what am I supposed to do here? And there's actually a stage before that, which is what is God revealing about himself? When you understand what God is revealing about himself, then you understand the action that he is asking you to take or the life that he is calling you into. And so what I see here is that God is a gatherer and he's a gatherer of people who weren't close to him. He's a gatherer of people who have uh, violated his commands. In fact, earlier he talked about keeping the Sabbath and I almost did a, uh, uh, a Street Faith episode on that because the, the point is not that the people didn't keep the Sabbath and that's what made God mad. The point is that they're not keeping the Sabbath was merely a symptom of a deeper problem was that, that they just didn't care about God. 
And that's where the faith always begins. That is the rock bottom foundation. Everything else is an extension or a symptom or a consequence of do you love God? This is why he's depicted as a lover in the book of Hosea. This is why he's depicted as a father and says he wants to have a relationship with us. Our, he, he's not upset because we didn't keep a command and mad and 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 uh, angered by that. Are not keeping a command shows that our relationship is sliding. And so they're not keeping the Sabbath showed that they were sliding away from him. But now he says, I'm going to gather you back. You have lost your love for me. You have violated the life that I called you into. I could obliterate you, but no, I'm going to gather you. God is a gatherer. That's what I saw in that devotion. And that is what we need to see to understand him properly. He's not a God that says, beat your slaves. Like those guys, the American slave owners misunderstood or willingly misunderstood more than likely from the scriptures. He's not the parent that always wants to come and judge and a visit from him makes you anxious because you want to prove yourself to him. He's the God who knows what, mess ups we are continues to love us anyway and says i'm going to gather you to myself that's part of who he is maybe not the entirety but it's part of it and it's a key part of it and it's a glorious part so i look at what this woman is experiencing in everything everywhere all at once i sympathize but i also rejoice because that's not what i have with my earthly parents by the grace of god but it's also not what I have with my heavenly father. He's not that kind of dad. He's one who wants to gather me back to him when I have gone astray. And not only me, but everybody else, all peoples as well. That is our little bit of street faith for today. Thank you for being with me. Hope you'll come back for an epi another episode very soon. where We will touch upon another matter of street faith.